Year 3568 third quarter slash Rota 37. Memorandum 4. 2. Vice President, Redacted. HOPE Head Office, Orwell Branch. Orwell 9, Orwell System, GS 4.93-23-35. From, General Manager Arendel. HEV Fountainhead. Currently assigned to HE Liber System, GS 4.93-24-35. Subject, After Action Report, R, HE Liber V Asset Valuation. 1. Background. The Or class Scout Cruiser Fountainhead was deployed to the HE Liber System, location, Grid Sector 4.93-24-35, to perform standard asset valuation exercises. Orbital scans of HE Liber V revealed an empty world, save for the presence of an artificial structure in the tundra of the northernmost continent. The structure's origin, age, composition, and purpose were indeterminate, and so a team was deployed to reconnoiter the site and conduct a preliminary cash ratio analysis. GM Arendel observed from the fountainhead by way of the team's third eye helmet cameras. 2. Summary Deployed Location, HE Liber V, HE Liber System, Grid Sector 24 Deployed Personnel, Team Lead Zhang, Associate Appraiser Harper, Associate Technician Genie, Munition Specialist Reza, Transport Pilot Fletcher, General Manager Arendel, Shipside Overwatch. Duration of Deployment, Began Year 3568 3rd Quarter Slash Rota 35 at 28 to 33, Ended Year 3568 3rd Quarter Slash Rota 35 at 2 hours 60 minutes. Contingency Purpose, in support of HEV Fountainhead's ongoing asset valuation of the HE Liber system. Scope of operation, scout and map the unknown structure, assess the site's contents, purpose, origin, and profit potential. 3. Timeline slash key events. 1. The deployed personnel, excepting GM Arendel, descend to the surface of the planet in an 80s-class light transport shuttle and land three miles south of the structure. Zhang, Harper, Ngini, and Reza begin to move through the snow towards the structure, while Fletcher stays behind with the shuttle. 2. The four of them reach the structure, which appears to be comprised of a series of large domes tessellating outward from a central spheroid, all of which are constructed from an unidentified sliver white metal. Despite its unconventional construction, the exterior wall does not possess any joints, seams, or cracks, and appears to have been cast as a single piece. The squad circle the entire perimeter, but find no means of ingress. Munition specialist Reza selects a spot along the wall of one of the outermost domes and attempts to breach with a shaped charge. It has no discernible effect on the building, but team lead Zhang orders him to try again. The seventh charge is successful in creating a small hole in the wall, just large enough for human entry. 3. There is no visible light in the structure's interior. The squad pauses to activate their helioptic and personal illumination system, now with a 30% lower chance of blindness, and proceed through the hole. At the center of the dome is a raised, circular dais, around which are concentric banks of consoles and fine machines whose purpose could not be discerned from their appearance alone. Everything appears to be composed of the same metal as the exterior wall. The squad sweeps the room, but finds nothing threatening or obviously out of place. The technology is dormant, and the facility appears to be pristine. There are no signs of life, no sounds, no trash, papers, or personal effects, not even dust. It is unclear whether the site is abandoned or never made operational in the first place. 4. Associate Appraiser Harper and Associate Technician Genie investigate the technologies while Reza and Jean guard the door to the next room. Genie and Harper are unable to activate the machines, and are therefore unable to assess their monetary value. 5. The team moves on to the next room and finds it in a similar state of dormancy. The layout is the same, 
although the machines appear to be different and the floor of the central dais is entirely concave. Unable to activate any machines or ascertain the room's purpose, the team moves on. 6. The floor of the following dome is flat, and the chamber is empty save for a large pyramid-shaped object resting upside down at its center. The nature of the pyramid is uncertain, as it possesses no evident screens, buttons, or interfaces. It is composed of a matte black metal, and Harper finds that it is warm to the touch. She suggests taking a sample for later analysis, but Zhang denies, asserting that they should attempt to restore power to the facility before dismantling anything inside. To that end, the team decides to head towards the central sphere. 7. They proceed through several more domes, each as strange as the first three. Every room is spotless, dark, and silent. Reza notes that the site appears to lack creature comforts, there are no bathrooms, no kitchens, not even any furniture. Genie speculates that the facility is meant to be operated remotely, although the layout of the dais rooms seems to indicate that a user is intended to be present. 8. As the squad approaches the central sphere, they perceive a faint blue glow and a whisper-soft warhum click sound emanating from the chamber. Upon entering they see that the center of the room is dominated by a massive machine whose utmost reaches disappear into the darkness above. Its base is a polyhedral concavity, out of which juts a series of hexagonal and octagonal columns that are placed asymmetrically and seemingly at random. Woven through the columns and each other are a series of rings studded with a variety of polygons. From the video feed, Horendel is able to recognize the presence of septagons, triskidecagons, and icocitragons, though there are a number of shapes that can't be seen clearly enough to positively identify. The rings are spinning at varying speeds, and it seems to be this motion that is generating the sound. The machine is built from a number of different metals, some of which have at least the appearance of lead, gold, cobalt, and platinum. 9. The machine occupies the team's attention and it is several moments before they notice the source of the light, which is being emitted by a perfect sphere, approximate one meter radius, hovering several feet off the ground at the base of the machine. The sphere appears to be hollow, with a transparent, glassy surface containing a roiling blue-white energy, for lack of a better word, that is the source of the glow. Genie speculates that it might be a power source, and begins to move closer. 10. When she draws closer the light begins to pulse and the sphere starts to change. Its surface flows like a viscous fluid and it pours itself into a vaguely humanoid shape formed mostly from polygons and sharp angles. It otherwise remains perfectly still. Team lead Zhang orders the squad into a defensive posture, but the object makes no further moves. The team relaxes after several moments, and Genie hypothesizes that the object could be an interface device of some kind. 11. The object itself dispels this notion. It somehow speaks in our language, stating in a completely monotone voice that it is actually a sapient being. Despite the emission of sound, no part of the entity moves. As it talks, the team falls again into a defensive posture, the following is a transcript of their interaction from this point on. Begin transcript. Zhang, how is it that you can speak our language? Entity, I've had repeated contacts with your society over the last, redacted. It was a simple language to begin with, and has only grown simpler with time. Zhang, the last several, what kind of contacts have you had with us? Entity, encounters not dissimilar to this, though most of them occur at a time and place of my choosing. Reza, we snuck up on you, huh? Entity, your, investigation of this facility necessitated my presence, yes. Reza, shit, we might get a raise for this. Harper, why reach out to our people? What were you trying to accomplish? Entity, to put it bluntly, redacted. Zhang, the fuck does that mean, exactly? Entity, your society is sick, a scourge on the galaxy. How much has hope destroyed in the pursuit of self-enrichment? 
how much have your people, redacted? Most of you live, redacted, enslaved, redacted. Have you never considered that, redacted? Zhang, redacted. Entity, the only reason is base greed. My people, redacted, we, redacted, for ourselves, and we can, redacted. The, redacted, needs to, redacted, and your people, redacted. Zhang, bullshit. Fucking bullshit Zeno lies. You just wanna sabotage us, get us, redacted. Genie, redacted. Harper, redacted. Zhang, what the fuck are you saying? You don't seriously believe this? Genie, I'm just saying, if we can, redacted, then we should. How many, redacted? If, redacted, we ought to. Reza, fuck, redacted, they should, redacted, themselves. Zhang, if there were a better way, we would already be there. Njini begins to approach the entity. Zhang, Njini, the fuck are you doing? Njini, are you seriously willing to turn your back on this? To entity, are you, redacted? Zhang, last warning, Njini. Njini, boss. Gunshot. End transcript. 11. The gunshot noted in the transcript is the sound of Zhang shooting Njini in the back of the head. After this occurs Harper begins to panic and the entity's light begins to pulse faster. Zhang begins to fire at the entity, and after several moments Reza joins him. The entity does not react, and the gunfire does not seem to damage it in any way. Reza and Zhang continue to fire, and the entity continues to do nothing until a stray bullet strikes one of the machine's rings, disrupting its axis. The video feeds distort and a moment later Zhang and his equipment evaporate. Harper begins to run, sprinting out of the sphere and back in the direction from which they came. Reza continues to fire. The entity turns to him, and his video feed distorts before cutting out. 12. Harper makes it out of the facility and begins running in the direction of the transport shuttle. The entity does not appear to be pursuing her. She attempts to radio Fletcher, but receives no response. GM Arendel then attempts to radio Fletcher, but also receives no response. 13. Harper's video feed distorts and freezes. Around one minute later, the Fountainhead observes a dome of bright white light expanding outward from the facility, growing to a radius of approximate 3,000 miles. When the light fades everything within its area has disappeared slash been destroyed. It leaves behind a massive concavity, and it becomes apparent that the dome of light was the top half of a sphere that extended underground. The crater is deep enough to reach the planet's core. This detonation effectively concludes the operation. 4. Conclusion At the time of this writing, H. E. Liber V has been completely destroyed. The entity's weapon destroyed enough of the planet to lower its gravitational pull causing the exposed core to leak out into space. As a result, the planet has collapsed in on itself entirely, and the rubble is slowly dispersing into space. Our science staff estimate that the shattered world will form a full rubble belt within the year, by which time it should be stable enough to begin asteroid mining operations. Whatever this entity was, it seems to be exceptionally powerful. If we can figure out how to contain one, there's no telling how much money its labor and technology could make us. There may be more of them deeper in this system, we should halt our operations here until we're confident that we can face one down. The loss of the ground team means that we don't have much in the way of data, but the sensor telemetry we were able to gather has our scientists scratching their heads, so maybe we can work something out. Vice President, Redacted, S Notes Whatever's going on here, I don't want my name attached to this clusterfuck. If the president finds out that this operation cost us an untapped planet and a facility full of alien technology, he'll make the whole department pit fight the intern waitlist and just hire whoever survives. I'm not fucking around, how do you think I got this job in the first place? 
For now, let's redirect our operations in this system towards the Virgin Cluster and pray to the Almighty Dollar that we don't run into more of these bastards. I'll commission a science team to pour over the existing data, but who knows if they'll be able to come up with anything useful. And let's retire this Arendel fella, shall we? And his bridge staff. Actually, let's just retire the whole crew. Better safe than sorry, loose lips sink spaceships, am I right? <laughs>